Good evening. You're looking live at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, where SpaceX is counting down to a target launch time of 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time. That's 4.30 a.m. UTC for a Falcon 9 rocket carrying a communication satellite named Botter 8. This is a satellite owned by the Pan-Arab multinational organization Arabsat. The spacecraft was built by Airbus Defense and Space in France and is now sitting inside the payload fairing of the Falcon 9 ready for its ride to space tonight at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time. That's 59 minutes from now. My name is Stephen Clark. I'm the editor of Space Flight Now. Welcome to our live coverage for another SpaceX mission from here on Florida's Space Coast. The weather conditions tonight are not great. We've already seen the weather uh, cause a delay in this launch of nearly or a little more than an hour. The launch window tonight actually opened a few minutes ago at 11.25 p.m. Eastern. That was the original target launch time this evening. But SpaceX has already pushed back that liftoff time until 12.30 a.m. Eastern time in hopes of weather conditions improving. It is uh, a rainy night here in Florida with uh, lots of cloud cover overhead. Uh, and uh, thunderstorms in the vicinity, although not directly impacting, no lightning directly impacting the spaceport right now. Uh, but some of these clouds may hold the risk of uh, electrical charge in them that could cause a strike to the rocket when it climbs through the clouds. So that's the uh, main concern tonight. They want to see these clouds uh, thin out and lift in time for the close of tonight's launch window, which uh, runs until 1.32 a.m. Eastern. So right now they're uh, targeting roughly the middle of this uh, roughly two-hour launch window at 12.30 a.m. So there's still about an hour of uh, wiggle room, of margin here for SpaceX to continue holding the clock and continuing to push back the launch time in increments until the end of the window if necessary. So going into tonight's countdown, there was a 70% probability of uh, no-go or unacceptable weather at the opening of the window. The trend in the forecast did, did call for an improvement of the weather throughout that two-hour launch window. So at the end of the window, there was a 50% chance of acceptable weather. So 50-50 odds at the end of the window. So SpaceX is uh, banking on that happening and that trend actually continuing tonight to get this mission off the ground. If not, there is a backup launch opportunity, that, launch opportunity that SpaceX has on the Eastern Range for tomorrow night at the same time, 11.25 p.m. until 1.32 a.m. Eastern Time. Here's a look at the satellite picture showing the weather conditions over the United States. Uh, zeroing in centered in this frame is Florida. You can see some of that cloud cover streaming across the Florida Peninsula throughout the night. And here is an infrared view showing some of the colder cloud tops at high altitude. Those are generally associated with thunderstorm activity. And here's a, a tighter shot showing the spaceport in the yellow circle under that cloud cover. And the uh, uh, off to the southwest there was the column showing where the cloud cover is moving from, uh, from, from uh, west to east across the peninsula tonight. Now, 56 minutes until the target launch time for this mission. This will be SpaceX's 36th launch of the year, the 33rd to utilize their workhorse Falcon 9 rocket. Of course, earlier in the year, SpaceX had two Falcon Heavy missions, as well as the first integrated, integrated flight test of the Super Heavy and Starship booster. So if you count all three of those, you get to 36 missions, including tonight's flight. This will be the 26th launch overall this year from here on Florida's Space Coast. If SpaceX is going to continue uh, to target this 12.30 launch time, we're about 20 minutes away from the start of propellant loading. That'll be the key point where SpaceX's launch team will decide whether to proceed with a launch at 12.30 or perhaps a push back the launch later into the window. Uh, so about 15 to 20 minutes of time remaining until SpaceX needs to make that decision on whether to uh, start loading propellants or to hold the countdown and wait for weather to get uh, a little bit better uh, later tonight. We'll be back with uh, further updates uh, throughout the countdown and the launch. It's about a 37 minute flight from liftoff until payload separation tonight for Botter 8. So it's about a uh, little more than a half hour from the time of liftoff until the 
launch portion of the mission is complete with satellite separation. If you haven't done so yet, please hit the thumbs up or the like button here on our stream. That helps us attract more viewers and a larger audience as we get closer to launch time. So if you want to help us out, one way to do that is to click the thumbs up or the like button just below our video uh, feed here on our YouTube channel. As you can see on the upper right of uh, our video feed, we just saw the countdown clock actually reset a few moments ago, and the clock is now uh, apparently targeting a new liftoff time of 12.45 a.m. Eastern Time. That's 4.45 a.m. UTC, so SpaceX has already decided a few moments ago to go ahead and push back the launch another 15 minutes uh, in hopes of weather improving here on Florida's Space Coast.
as the countdown for this updated target launch time approaches the one hour, two minute mark. Uh, that target launch time now for the Falcon 9 is at 12.45 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time or 4.45 a.m. UTC for the launch uh, from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station of the uh, Botter 8 communications satellite for Saudi Arabia-based Arabsat. Meanwhile, a few miles to the north up at uh, Space Launch Complex 41, you're looking at a live view now of the Vulcan Centaur rocket on Pad 41. United Launch Alliance rolled this rocket out to the launch pad from its uh, vertical integration facility hangar yesterday to move it into position for another a tanking test and a flight readiness firing or test firing of its first stage in engines. This will be the first time that the engines on board the uh, Vulcan Centaur rocket will be fired on the launch pad after a practice countdown, a full up dress rehearsal for the maiden flight of the Vulcan rocket. The schedule for this test, though, uh, partially hinges on the uh, launch of the Falcon 9 rocket uh, tonight from Pad 40, just a couple miles to the south. So these two pads are adjacent to one another at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And uh, Pad 40 is where the Falcon 9 is currently sitting on uh, waiting its launch tonight. So if the Falcon 9 launches tonight, uh, ULA could potentially... Uh, began preparations for their flight readiness firing as soon as tomorrow. Could be later in the week. ULA has not announced their official target date yet. Uh, but if the uh, Falcon 9 does not get off the ground tonight due to the stormy weather and rainfall and cloud cover at Cape Canaveral, the Falcon 9 launch will be delayed to until tomorrow night when the weather forecast is again iffy. And that would therefore delay or push the Vulcan test firing later in the week. So... Uh, the Falcon 9 is first in line on the eastern range for this operation. And uh, once the Falcon 9 gets off the ground, the Vulcan rocket will be cleared uh, by the range at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, the Space Force Eastern Range, uh, to go ahead and proceed with ULA's uh, flight readiness firing, the six-second test firing of the two main engines on the first stage. This hold-down firing uh, will uh, be the culmination of a series of ground tests with uh, the Vulcan rocket that uh, arrived at Cape Canaveral back in January to begin its launch campaign for its first mission. Previous to that, uh, ULA actually had a Pathfinder or test article for a Vulcan rocket at the Cape uh, undergoing its own tanking test uh, a couple of years ago, back in 2021. So this flight readiness firing will be one of the last major milestones before ULA can actually proceed into the final launch preparations that will involve lifting the payloads on top of the rocket. Uh, as you can see, if you look closely, the payload fairing is not on the Vulcan rocket for this test firing. So it's just the first stage and the Centaur upper stage stacked together. ULA also needs to add two strap-on solid rocket boosters to each side of that first stage core uh, to get it into the launch configuration. So this will be something we'll be watching uh, later in the week uh, after the launch of the Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral. And we'll, of course, have live coverage of the Vulcan test firing on spaceflightnow.com. We'll also be uh, streaming it here on our YouTube channel when it happens. Back to a live shot now of Pad 40, where we're now inside of an hour to the new target launch time for the Botter 8 mission on the Falcon 9 rocket. That is now scheduled for 12.45 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time or 4.45 a.m. UTC as SpaceX's launch team continues to uh, push back the launch time uh, throughout this roughly two-hour window tonight to wait for better weather conditions.
SpaceX's countdown now is at 50 minutes and 38 seconds and counting. Let's take a look at the payload for tonight's mission. The payload is called uh, Botter 8. It's owned by Aerosat, which is a 21-nation consortium based in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Botter 8 uh, will be replacing uh, Arabsat's Botter 6 satellite in geostationary orbit, which has been in service since 2008. This new spacecraft was built by Airbus Defense and Space in Toulouse, France. It's based on Airbus's Eurostar NEO platform, which is Airbus's newest large spacecraft design, debuted last year. The Eurostar NEO platform uses uh, all, uh, all electric propulsion, so there's no hydrazine, no toxic fuel on board the satellite, as many spacecraft uh, have for uh, maneuvers in orbit. This is all uh, propelled by ion thrusters, electric engines. These are very low thrust but highly efficient uh, thrusters that are used for orbital maneuvers. With the all-electric satellite platform, when you don't have this large propellant tank, the satellites often are a little bit lighter than uh, the liquid-fueled propulsion system satellites. So this launch mass of this spacecraft is around four and a half metric tons, or about 9,900 pounds. And that will mean the Falcon 9 rocket can propel the satellite into what's called a super-synchronous transfer orbit with a, an apogee or high point uh, tens of thousands of miles above the Earth. The spacecraft, I should say, uh, will be actually operated in geostationary orbit geostationary orbit, so it'll be launched into an elliptical orbit, and then the satellite will use its own propulsion system, this, these ion engines, to circularize its orbit about 22,000 miles over the equator. It's about 36,000 kilometers over the equator, and that will take several months. And once it settles into that circular orbit, the satellite will be orbiting Earth in lockstep with the planet's rotation. So that means it'll have a fixed coverage zone over uh, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Central Asia and antennas on the ground that are pointing to the sky to connect to this satellite only have to point at a fixed position in the sky because the satellite will remain uh, orbiting in the same longitude at uh, 26 degrees east 24 hours a day so it'll remain over that same position uh, throughout its uh, service life which is uh, scheduled to last about 15 years this spacecraft uh, carries C-band and KU-band payloads primarily for data services and television broadcasts over the region I mentioned before, centered on the Middle East, but also in neighboring regions. And notably, the satellite also hosts a laser communications technology demonstration called Telio. This will uh, demonstrate uh, space-to-ground uh, laser links, optical, optical communications links that are uh, resistant to jamming. And these uh, links can actually allow the transfer of data of up to 10 gigabits per second. So that's a uh, pretty significant uh, improvement over traditional uh, radio frequency communication systems and also has the additional benefit of being resist resistant to jamming. So there's a lot of applications for this technology in data relay services for satellites in low Earth orbit, as well as for getting data from uh, sensors in space back to the ground at high speed and in high fidelity and getting those to the users quickly. So this Satelio demonstration is a joint project between Airbus Defense and Space, uh, Safran Data Systems in France, and also the French space agency known as CNES. Those are the three institutions and three companies partnering on this laser tech demo. Back to a full screen shot now of pad 40 where the countdown is now less than 47 minutes away from the target launch time of uh, 12.45 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. If the clock at the countdown remains on schedule, we expect to hear confirmation in the next 10 minutes or so whether SpaceX is going to proceed into propellant loading, so they have a big decision to make uh, in the next 10 minutes on whether to uh, target this 12.45 a.m. launch time or push the launch back later into the window, which runs all the way until 1.32 a.m. Eastern Time. So still about 45 minutes to work with uh, to wait for the weather to improve if they need to. SpaceX, uh, the launch team, uh, once they commit to loading propellant, once they start loading these uh, distensified kerosene and liquid oxygen into the vehicle, they'll be committed to the 12.45 a.m. launch time at that point. So they need to make that decision 35 minutes ahead of time and whether they're confident that the weather is going to be go at the target launch time, or if they're not confident, they can push the launch back another few minutes in hopes of improved conditions 
later in the window. While we wait for that update from SpaceX, uh, if you haven't done so yet, please hit the thumbs up or the like button here on our YouTube stream. That really helps us uh, out with attracting a larger audience and more viewers to our coverage. Now, 45 minutes until the target launch time. We're just passing midnight here on Florida Space Coast, midnight Eastern time. Now, less than 10 minutes from the start of propellant loading. And the countdown clock is now holding again, so this is a good indication that the launch time will be uh, rescheduled, reset for uh, sometime later than 1245. We'll see what the clock resets to in the next few moments to see uh, what the new target launch time will be.
So if you haven't noticed, the countdown clock has indeed been reset for the new target launch time, which is 12.55 a.m. Eastern or 4.55 a.m. UTC. The launch window tonight runs until 1.32 a.m. Eastern. So still about 37 minutes of window remaining for SpaceX to work with. And now about 15 minutes away from the decision point on go or no go to begin propellant loading for this new target launch time of 12.55 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time.
We're now inside of 45 minutes until the target launch time for SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket here at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Uh, we've gotten to this point before and seen SpaceX push back the target launch time. So we'll see if the clock remains ticking for this updated launch time of 12.55 a.m. Eastern or 4.55 a.m. UTC. There's still some time in the launch window for SpaceX to work with if they elect to do so, if the weather conditions uh, aren't quite there yet, if the weather will look better toward the end of the window, they have that option in the next nine minutes to make the decision to hold the clock and target a new time. But once we hit T minus 35 minutes, once they start loading propellants into the Falcon 9, uh, they'll be committed to a, a target launch time. And uh, if the weather is no go after that point, they won't have the option of delaying until later in the window. They'll have to stand down, scrub the launch attempt, and come back tomorrow night for another countdown. Once uh, SpaceX picks up the countdown at uh, the T-minus 35-minute point, here's a look at some of the main milestones as the countdown will head toward the target launch time. So propellant loading will begin at 35 minutes prior to launch. That'll be followed by loading of liquid oxygen on the second stage starting at 16 minutes. So initially, SpaceX will load uh, three of the four propellant tanks. The fourth propellant tank won't start loading until T-minus 16 minutes. And then in the final 10 minutes, the pace of activity really picks up with the engine chill down on the first stage of the Falcon 9 at seven minutes. And then that'll be followed by a retraction of the strong back from the rocket at four minutes, 30 seconds. At two minutes prior to launch, we expect the Falcon 9 to be fully loaded with propellant. It'll weigh about 1.2 million pounds fully loaded for liftoff. And then at T minus one minute, the Control of the countdown will be handed over from a ground sequencer computer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computer. That will oversee the final uh, numerous checks to uh, ensure that the Falcon 9 is ready for liftoff. And then at three seconds, the command will be given by the flight computer to ignite the nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. And then at T0, we'll see liftoff of the Falcon 9.
SpaceX's countdown is now less than five minutes away from the scheduled time of propellant loading. Still no word from SpaceX on whether they'll be proceeding with this 12.55 a.m. launch time or if they might uh, like to push the launch time later in the window as they wait for weather conditions to improve. It has stopped raining at uh, Cape Canaveral and at Kennedy Space Center after some steady rainfall all evening. But a thick uh, layer of cloud cover still remains entrenched over the Space Coast. And we're now seeing the countdown clock hold once again. So uh, looks like the 12.55 a.m. launch time is now out the window. We'll see when the clock resets, uh, when a new target launch time might be uh, forthcoming. So the countdown clock is uh, now rescheduled for 1.10 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, here's a look at the satellite picture showing that thick cloud cover moving across central Florida, approaching uh, the Space Coast right now. So that's the weather concern that's being monitored by SpaceX and the launch or the launch weather officer from the 45th Weather Squadron. And here's a look again at the moving satellite picture showing the cloud associated with uh, some thunderstorm activity right over Florida Space Coast right now.
SpaceX's countdown now approaching at T-minus 45 minutes and counting for this updated target launch time, which is now 1.10 a.m. Eastern time. So we've seen a few launch times tonight, a change as SpaceX waits for the weather conditions to get uh, within bounds here at Cape Canaveral, Florida. The window opened at 11.25 p.m. Eastern time. The launch slipped to uh, midnight Eastern and then 12.30 then 12.45, then 12.55, and now it's going to be 1.10 a.m. Eastern Time, pending weather. So that's the big question mark. We've seen a big, a thick uh, area of cloud cover move over the Space Coast in the last uh, few minutes, uh, off from the west. And uh, it has been raining throughout the night. The rainfall has stopped, but the thick cloud cover remains over the Space Coast of Florida. And these thick clouds could hold electrical charges within them that could cause the risk of lightning when the Falcon 9 climbs through those clouds. So a lightning strike on a rocket, obviously not a good thing. So the weather officer and SpaceX will be monitoring all of these weather conditions, the movement, the thickness, the height of all the clouds, uh, and the electrical charge in the atmosphere uh, before rendering a go or no-go decision on weather. Right now, SpaceX is less than nine minutes away from the target launch time, or nine minutes away, rather, from the start of propellant loading if they're going to remain on the target launch time of 110. Still a little more than 20 minutes of launch window remaining for SpaceX to work with tonight. And the countdown clock is holding once again. As I mentioned, there's still about 22 minutes of launch window to work with. So we'll see if SpaceX is uh, going to reset for uh, later in the window or perhaps the end of the window in hopes of the conditions improving. We'll see where that count countdown clock resets to in a few moments. While we wait for that, we want to thank those of you who have contributed in the Super Chat. Uh, most recently, Peter, thank you for your donation in the Super Chat. Uh, these uh, contributions go a long way toward helping us uh, gather more cameras, gather more equipment, uh, get more uh, members on our team to bring you more launch coverage, more views, more information, more context for all of these missions that are launching from uh, Florida Space Coast and around the world. The clock has been reset uh, on the upper right, now 53 minutes and counting. So the new target launch time is 1.22 a.m. Eastern time. That is uh, 10 minutes before the end of the window, which is at 1.32 a.m. Eastern. So the new target launch time to recap is 1.22 a.m. Eastern time, 5.22 a.m. UTC.
45 minutes, 30 seconds now until the updated target launch time, which uh, should correct something I said earlier. 1.22 a.m. Eastern time is the end of tonight's launch window. So here's a look at the satellite picture showing the weather situation centered on Florida. You can see we had a lot of thunderstorm activity here earlier in the day. A lot of that's weakening, but there's a lot of remnant cloud cover and remnant uh, light rain over the Space Coast. And in the last uh, hour or so, we've seen some new thunderstorm development just north of the Space Center, just north of the launch pad. And uh, that new development, new rain shower development, uh, is something that's also being monitored by the launch weather officer. They're monitoring, again, the primary risk as the uh, risk of lightning that could strike the rocket. So they're looking at things like cloud thickness, cloud height, and uh, electrification or uh, electrical charge in the atmosphere using a network of sensors around the spaceport. So even though there's not any lightning uh, directly over the launch pad or in the flight path at this moment, there is a, a chance of a charge or electrification in the atmosphere that could cause uh, the uh, Falcon 9 to trigger a lightning strike onto itself as it climbs through the cloud, which obviously would not be a good thing. It would add risk uh, to the launch. Uh, we've seen rockets in the past be uh, struck by lightning, and some of those have caused a catastrophic failures of the rocket uh, during a lightning strike. So that's something that's always top of mind for the launch weather officer and the 45th Weather Squadron team, the forecast team uh, from the Space Force at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, which provides forecast services uh, for all uh, of the launches from Florida Space Coast, as well as other mission critical operations. Central Florida is one of the uh, hot spots for lightning around the world. And out at the pad, the four uh, towers on each side of the rocket with the flashing lights, those are lightning protection towers that are in place to uh, protect the Falcon 9 rocket while it's vertical on the pad from a direct lightning strike. Now 43 minutes and counting until the uh, target launch time, which is now set for the end of the window tonight at 1.22 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 5.22 a.m. UTC. If you're just joining us and you haven't done so, done so yet, please hit the thumbs up or the like button here on our YouTube stream. That helps us attract a larger audience as uh, we're getting down to a decision point from SpaceX on whether to proceed into propellant loading. That would be at T minus 35 minutes.
Now less than five minutes until the decision point for SpaceX to uh, whether they're going to proceed into propellant loading or not. Uh, we do uh, have mission audio now from the Launch and Landing Control Center. We'll bring that into this stream in just the next few moments. So we'll be able to listen to the call outs from the launch director. Uh, this is a favorable sign that the launch team will actually begin loading propellants into the Falcon 9 rocket. We don't have confirmation of that go just yet. We hope to get that in the next couple of minutes. Uh, we also don't know uh, the current status of weather, uh, whether it's go or no go. Uh, there is a chance that the launch team, even if the weather is no go, they could start loading propellants and take this clock all the way down to the final moments before liftoff uh, just to buy some more time for the weather to improve. This is the launch director on countdown one with abort instructions. For non-urgent no-go conditions, brief the CE or LD and they will approve aborting the countdown. For urgent issues affecting the safety of the operation, operators shall call hold, hold, hold on the primary countdown net. Launch control will abort the launch auto sequence immediately and proceed into the launch abort auto sequence. At T minus 10 seconds, launch control will be hands off and relying on automated abort criteria for the remainder of the count. Venting tanks for the start of propellant load. So we now have the mission. We now have the mission audio from SpaceX launch and landing control piped into our live stream. So we're hearing some voices from the control center just a few miles to the south of the launch pad, where SpaceX engineers are gathered to oversee this morning's countdown. So it sounds like they're going to proceed into propellant loading. We did not hear any words from the launch director on the current status of weather. Well, uh, we haven't heard uh, if the weather is currently acceptable or forecast to be acceptable at 1.22 a.m., but uh, it sounds like they're going to load propellants and take the countdown uh, until the final few minutes, or perhaps the final minute, in hopes of uh, having acceptable weather for that target launch time of 1.22 a.m. Eastern. Now about one minute away from the start of propellant loading. Launch auto sequence has started. And the launch auto sequence has started. That's the word from SpaceX launch control. So the computer, uh, ground computer sequencer is now running the countdown. This is an automated countdown sequence that began at T minus 35 minutes. And also at the same time, propellant loading has now begun on the Falcon 9. So three of the four propellant tanks are being loaded on the Falcon 9 at this time. The first stage is getting its load of kerosene and liquid oxygen, and the second stage is currently being loaded with kerosene fuel. 
Uh, liquid oxygen loading on stage two will begin at T-minus 16 minutes. One more time, let's take a look at the payload for this morning's mission. It's Botter 8, owned by ArabSat, which is a consortium uh, made up of 21 member states in the Arab world, based in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. ArabSat has a fleet of geostationary communication satellites. Botter 8 is set to join that constellation. Botter 8 will replace uh, the Botter 6 satellite, which has been in orbit since 2008. It's an aging communication satellite uh, nearing retirement. This particular satellite was built by Airbus Defense and Space. It's based on Airbus's Eurostar NEO platform, which is consists of all electric propulsion. So there's no uh, liquid fueled engines. There, there's no large liquid propellant tank on this satellite. It's uh, fueled by xenon gas, which is used as uh, to provide impulse out of the ion thrusters on the satellite for low thrust but high efficient performance in the vacuum of space. Those ion engines are at the end of articulating robotic arms that are used for pointing. So these uh, ion engines are used for major orbital maneuvers and without uh, ha having the need for a large liquid propellant tank, the satellite weighs in a little bit lighter than many uh, similar, similarly uh, capable communication satellites. This particular satellite has a launch mass of around four and a half metric tons that's just shy of 10,000 pounds. The Falcon 9 rocket that you're seeing out on pad 40 will launch this satellite into what's called a super synchronous transfer orbit with a high point above the satellite's eventual operating position at 22,000 miles. And this uh, super synchronous transfer orbit actually creates a more efficient route for the satellite to uh, use its own thrusters to circularize its orbit at geostationary altitude in the coming months. This will take a few months with these ion engines for the orbit circularization process to complete. And then in geostationary orbit at 22,000 miles over the equator, the satellite will actually orbit the Earth at the same speed as the Earth's rotation. So it'll orbit in lockstep with the rotation of the planet and will settle into position at 26 degrees east longitude. And that'll be where it uh, begins its 15 year operational service life later this year. It'll be uh, providing communications coverage over uh, Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia for Arabsat. This satellite carries a suite of C-band and KU-band payloads, primarily for TV broadcast services and data relay services over that region. Also on board Botter 8 is the Telio Laser Communications Technology Demonstration Package. This Telio package is a partnership between Airbus, the French space agency Kness and the French company Safran Data Systems. Uh, these three organizations are partnering to demonstrate new optical optical communications technology from geostationary orbit. Uh, these laser uh, tech demo experiments will involve space to ground links from Earth to the satellite to uh, transmit data at speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second, faster than conventional uh, RF or radio frequency communications signals. So this allows uh, a higher volume of data to move between the Earth and the satellite. Uh, and this is a tech demo, as I mentioned, this is a series of experiments that are planned with this Botter 8 satellite. Eventually, Airbus hopes to deploy this Telio uh, system, a similar technology on operational missions to uh, get sensor data from satellites back to the ground at higher speed, faster, and also to uh, create a system that's more resistant to jamming. So uh, one other benefit of laser communications is it's uh, jam resistant and is uh, less as more difficult to interrupt those signals. And uh, it adds a layer of security that's uh, harder to obtain with conventional radio frequency communications links. Here's an artist illustration of the Botter 8 satellite. Uh, this is how it will appear in orbit with its uh, antennas and solar panels deployed. So it has a very large array of solar panels on both sides of the satellite. Uh, those, those solar panels will generate about 17 kilowatts of power and will not only power the satellite systems and communications payload, but also uh, that electricity will be used as part of the electric propulsion system for orbit orbital maneuvers. So a very uh, high capacity uh, power system on this satellite 
uh, for this Bottery mission. Here's a look at the countdown timeline. We've already passed the T-minus 35 minute mark in this morning's countdown. Uh, we saw a series of delays in the launch time earlier uh, in the morning and yesterday evening as SpaceX waited for weather conditions to improve. The weather is still uh, a concern, however, so we'll see if the weather is going to end up being go or no go come 1.22 a.m., the target launch time. The next major milestone will be at T minus 20 minutes, which will be the completion of the loading of kerosene on stage two of the Falcon 9. At that point, we also will see the so-called big vent, the gaseous oxygen vent from the strong back. Uh, that's the structure next to the Falcon 9. That'll be coming at 20 minutes prior to launch. And then at 16 minutes, liquid oxygen loading will start on stage two. At seven minutes, we expect to see engine chill down. That's when the nine Merlin engines on the first stage will begin to be thermally conditioned for flight. And then at six minutes prior to launch, kerosene loading on stage one will be complete. At four and a half minutes prior to liftoff, we'll see the strong back next to the Falcon 9 uh, retract to an angle of just about a degree and a half from the vehicle. And then at two minutes, liquid oxygen loading will be terminated. At that point, SpaceX will have uh, filled the rocket with a about a million pounds of kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants. And then they'll have a fully loaded vehicle at that time as the countdown approaches one minute prior to liftoff, which is when control of the count will be passed from the ground computer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computer. And the Falcon 9 will run its own series of checks onboard autonomously to make sure all systems are ready for liftoff at 1.22 a.m. Eastern time, 5.22 a.m. UTC, weather permitting. The ignition sequence for the Merlin engines, as we see here in this chart, will begin at T-minus three seconds. One more look at uh, Botter 8 uh, with an Airbus engineer here uh, for scale. This is when the satellite was actually placed into its shipping container a few weeks ago at the factory of Airbus Defense and Space in Toulouse, France. It flew across the Atlantic on an Antonov, Ukrainian Antonov AN-124 transport plane and arrived at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station for final launch preparations. SpaceX's countdown is now at 26 minutes and 42 seconds and counting. Out at pad 40, you can see the uh, liquid oxygen load is well underway. That white uh, area that you're seeing around the vehicle, about a third of the way up the rocket, is the liquid oxygen tank. That's where the oxidizer is being loaded into the first stage right now. The liquid oxygen is uh, very cold. It's a cryogenic temperature is a few hundred degrees below zero, and that causes some uh, condensation of the air around the rocket, as well as some accumulation of frost on the skin of the rocket, on the outer skin of the airframe. And that's that white you're seeing around the liquid oxygen tank. Below the liquid oxygen tank, uh, where there's no frost right now, that's the kerosene tank, the fuel tank on stage one. The fuel is closer to room temperature, so there's no frost buildup in that area of the rocket. But throughout the countdown, over the next 20-25 minutes, you'll see the level of the uh, condensation and frost on stage one rise up the length of the rocket until that tank is full. So that's a good way to track the loading progress of propellants on stage one. T minus 25 minutes and counting. If you haven't done so yet, one more uh, request for you to please hit the thumbs up or the like button here on our YouTube stream. That helps us get more people watching our coverage as we get to this uh, target launch time of 1.22 a.m. Eastern, 5.22 UTC for the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket.
We want to thank those of you who have contributed to our uh, coverage in the Super Chat here on our YouTube channel. Most recently, SG, thank you for your contribution. These contributions are really uh, the lifeblood that keep us going, that keep us um, continuing to be able to go out to Cape Canaveral, the Kennedy Space Center, to cover these launches and help us maintain our 23-year record of launch coverage on spaceflightnow.com. So these uh, the contributions go toward new cameras, uh, new equipment to bring you better views of all of these launches as well as uh, contributing to our staff uh, to keep us uh, keep our team uh, ready and uh, capable of covering this increasing cadence of launches. This is the 26th launch of the year from Florida Space Coast. This is the 36th SpaceX launch of the year as well. So a very busy year shaping up, likely exceeding uh, the record pace set just last year. The next major milestone in the countdown will be coming in about a minute, a little more than a minute from now. That'll be the big vent uh, from the strong back, the gaseous oxygen vent. Uh, that will be a very clear sign that we see in our live view of the pad. That's associated with the completion of kerosene fueling on stage two. The spacecraft is on internal power. And we just heard a call from launch control from the mission manager for Butter 8, confirming that the spacecraft on internal power. The Butter 8 spacecraft is now on internal power. It was running off its onboard battery supply and has been uh, removed from the external power supply from the ground. It will remain on battery power until it gets into orbit. And at that point, it will deploy its solar panels to begin recharging those batteries. Coming up on the uh, vent, the gaseous oxygen vent from the strong back in the next few minutes. It's a few seconds. And there's the vent uh, now underway from the strong back. This is a gaseous oxygen vent. Stage two, fuel load complete. This occurs at the end of fuel load on stage two. We just heard that call confirmed from controls from the control center. And at this point, uh, the gaseous oxygen vent is also associated with the start of chill down. This is the thermal conditioning of the liquid oxygen transfer line that runs from the uh, storage tank out at pad 40 where that cryogenic oxidizer is stored on the ground, up the pipe, up the strong back to the inlet, the umbilical connection, with stage two, that whole line needs to be thermally conditioned to allow the flow of liquid oxygen into stage two. Because liquid oxygen, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in our coverage, is very cold. It's uh, a few hundred degrees below zero. And those uh, components and the uh, materials that make up various parts of the rocket and the plumbing are sensitive to those cold temperatures. So they need to be gradually brought down to their operating temperature before the uh, oxidizer can actually be pumped into the rocket. T minus 19 minutes and counting now. As you can see on stage one, the first stage liquid oxygen tank, it looks like it's now about half full.
vent, uh, the gaseous oxygen vent from the strong back has now been uh, terminated. Stage two lock load has started. And that means liquid oxygen loading on stage two has started. That vent completes uh, right at the start of a uh, loading of liquid oxygen on stage two. So now 16 minutes and 10 seconds uh, from liftoff. Uh, from a technical perspective, the countdown is proceeding uh, on on the expected schedule right now for the 1.22 a.m. target launch time. That's 5.22 UTC. However, the big question mark continues to be weather. We don't have confirmation yet that the weather is go for launch. Uh, that's been a watch item throughout the overnight hours here on Florida Space Coast with uh, thunderstorm activity and thick clouds over the Space Center. The thunderstorms have largely uh, dissipated, but the cloud cover remains. T-minus 15 minutes and counting. 15 minutes remaining until SpaceX's 33rd Falcon 9 launch of the year, the 36th launch overall this year, including uh, their two Falcon Heavy missions and the Starship flight test earlier this year. Here's a look at the uh, ground track, the flight path for this morning's mission. This is will fly on a trajectory uh, due east from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. The red line here shows the flight path. Uh, this is an easterly trajectory that's necessary and required, really, to target the equatorial orbit for this Butter 8 communications satellite for AirobSat. It'll be settling into position over the equator, and to reach that orbit, the Falcon 9 needs to head east. Uh, and uh, eventually intersect the equator near the west coast of Africa uh, for its orbit insertion burn to uh, put this satellite into its uh, target deployment orbit, uh, super synchronous transfer orbit as it's called. We've labeled here the departure point, Space Launch Complex 40, here on Florida's east coast, as well as the location for the drone ship. This is the football field sized uh, landing platform named Just Read the Instructions. That's floating about 400 miles downrange from Cape Canaveral. That's the uh, location where the first stage booster on this mission will target a landing about 8 minutes and 44 seconds into the flight. A little farther downrange is another SpaceX recovery vessel that's on station to retrieve the two halves of the Falcon 9's payload fairing after they parachute into the sea. So the drone ship and that fairing or recovery vessel will bring the booster and the payload fairing halves back to Port Canaveral in the coming days for refurbishment and reuse.
10 minutes, 45 seconds remaining until the target launch time for SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. If you're just joining us, we've uh, gone through a number of different target launch times overnight tonight. The launch window opened at 11.25 uh, p.m. Eastern Time about uh, two hours ago. But SpaceX uh, pushed back the launch time in increments throughout the window and is now targeting the end of tonight's window or this morning's window at 1.22 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.22 a.m. UTC to get this mission going. This mission now 10 minutes away from liftoff will carry the Botter 8 communication satellite. That's about a four and a half ton TV broadcasting and data relay satellite built by Airbus for Arabsat to provide communications coverage over the Middle East, Africa, Europe, and Central Asia. Now, 8 minutes, 35 seconds until liftoff. Out at pad 40, you can see the frost is nearing the top of the liquid oxygen tank on stage 1, so that means pellet loading will be wrapping up shortly. The loading of oxidizer will be terminated at T-minus 2 minutes. Minus seven minutes and counting. Engine chill has started. That report from SpaceX Launch Control confirms that engine chill down has started. We showed that countdown a timeline chart earlier in our coverage. So at seven minutes, that's when the thermal conditioning of the first stage engines gets underway. This involves flowing just a small amount of the super cold liquid oxygen out of the tank into the engine compartment to uh, thermally condition those materials uh, for the flow of that oxidizer at engine ignition. This protects the materials inside the engines and uh, the pipes leading to those engines from the risk of thermal shock or damage uh, from that flow of the cryogenic oxidizer. Stage one, fuel load complete. And now we've heard confirmation that the first stage fuel load is complete. So kerosene has been loaded into both stages of the Falcon 9. It's about 46,000 gallons in total for kerosene, also known as RP-1, or rocket propellant 1. This is a highly 
refined grade of uh, kerosene uh, petroleum-based fuel that's used to power the Merlin engines on the first stage and the single Merlin engine on stage two. Liquid oxygen will continue flowing into the rocket uh, until about T minus two minutes. One more time as we are now approaching the five minute mark in the countdown. If you haven't done so yet, please hit the thumbs up or the like button here on our YouTube stream. That really helps us out by getting as many eyes and many viewers watching our coverage as possible. We want to bring this launch uh, to as many viewers who are interested. One way to help us do that is to hit the thumbs up or the like button. Also, if you want to contribute to our coverage, you can do that in the super chat here on YouTube. This uh, donation, any contribution you provide here, we greatly appreciate it's what buys cameras. It's what buys uh, vehicle tank for our pressurizing for a strong back retract. All of our equipment to bring you these live views from Cape Canaveral. Coming up on strong back retract at pad 40, this will be the uh, motion to recline the strong back from the Falcon 9, about one and a half degrees from the vehicle. Here's a view from SpaceX, uh, one of their launch pad cameras showing the top of the Falcon 9 rocket. We'll see the clamp arms on top of that uh, strong back that wrap around just below the payload fairing with that Arab Sat logo there. Those clamps will be opening momentarily to allow the strong back to move. And there go the clamps to begin the strong back retract process. Minus four minutes and counting. And thank you to those of you who have contributed in the, contributed in the super chat. I'm going to thank, I think, Sipe Sipe for your contribution. Really appreciate that. And also thanks to SG for your super chat contribution. This really helps us a lot. Three minutes, 30 seconds until liftoff. We're seeing movement now of the strong back moving to a position about one and a half degrees from the rocket. It'll recline. We have a hold in the countdown. Hold, hold, hold. Launch board is running. Countdown has stopped at 3 minutes 22 seconds, and this will uh, assuredly mean a scrub for tonight. So it means the launch will not be happening tonight because we were already at the end of SpaceX's launch window. We'll stand by for uh, words from SpaceX on reason for the hold, likely weather, but we'll try to confirm that. SpaceX is ending their live coverage of tonight's countdown uh, after this hold at uh, 3 minutes and 22 seconds. 
before liftoff. It sounds like the cause of the hold was weather, although SpaceX uh, in, in their statement at the end of their live stream uh, wasn't totally clear. Uh, they said that weather had been a watch item and they were standing down from their coverage and standing down from the launch attempt this morning. But we know the weather was an issue throughout the night, and that does appear to be what uh, caused SpaceX to hold the countdown and scrub tonight's launch attempt, as you can see here. There wasn't enough time for this cloud cover over the Space Coast to dissipate enough uh, to allow the Falcon 9 to begin its uh, climb to space with Arabsat's Botter 8 satellite. Weather uh, is trending in the in a good direction, and uh, the cloud cover has been thinning somewhat and moving offshore, but just not enough time before the end of the launch window this morning. And as you can see on the upper right, the countdown clock has been reset uh, awaiting the next launch attempt which uh, is going to be targeted for no earlier than tonight Wednesday night May the 24th so about 22 hours from now will be the next opportunity when the launch window opens at 11 25 p.m eastern time or 3 25 a.m UTC the same time as tonight's launch attempt With uh, tonight's scrubbed launch attempt, uh, this means the operation that ULA, United Launch Alliance, has planned this week to uh, test fire their first Vulcan rocket at Pad 41, just a couple of miles north of the Falcon 9 pad at uh, Pad 40, uh, will be delayed later in the week. Uh, it's waiting for the launch of this Falcon 9 rocket, which has the Eastern Range, uh, the Space Force team, booked uh, for tonight and tomorrow night for the primary and backup launch attempts. So uh, ULA will wait for the uh, launch of the Falcon 9, hopefully tomorrow night, weather permitting, and that pushes the uh, test firing of the Vulcan Centaur rocket. It'll be a six second hold down test of the first Vulcan rocket with its Blue Origin built engines uh, later in the week. So that's the other main item we're watching here on Florida Space Coast at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station this week alongside this launch of the Falcon 9 with Botter 8. Before we 
conclude our live coverage. Uh, here's a look at some of, of the upcoming missions on our launch schedule. Uh, we don't have the next launch attempt for the Falcon 9 and the Botter 8 satellite on this, but you can add that to the list for May the 24th. So a busy, actually a very busy 24 hours shaping up in the world of uh, space launch with uh, four orbital launch attempts planned in uh, less than a 24-hour period, beginning with uh, the launch of South Korea's Nuri rocket uh, from the Narrow Space Center. This is a fully domestically produced launch vehicle uh, by South Korea. We'll be carrying a cluster of small satellites into orbit. Uh, primarily, uh, the biggest one is called NextSat-2. This will be the second launch attempt for the Nuri rocket after a uh, launch failure back in October that uh, on its first test flight that left the rocket just shy of reaching orbital velocity. So this will be the second test flight for the Nuri rocket. Following that, uh, later today will be the launch of a Soyuz rocket from uh, Baik the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. This will carry a Progress resupply ship heading to the International Space Station with a few food, fuel, and supplies heading up to the seven-person crew, the seven-person long-term crew on the space station. There are currently 11 people on the space station uh, this week with the arrival on Monday of the Axiom-2 private astronaut mission, uh, two Americans and two Saudis on that flight. And then... Uh, Tonight, uh, the night of May the 24th, we'll see the next launch attempt, uh, weather permitting, for SpaceX's Falcon 9 with the Botter 8. And then at midnight, just a few uh, short minutes after the opening of the launch window for the Falcon 9 and Botter 8, Rocket Lab will be launching a pair of NASA research satellites called Tropics 5 and 6. These are hurricane uh, research and observation satellites. This will be launched from down in New Zealand. And then on Friday, May the 26th, another Soyuz rocket, another Russian launch from the Vostochny Cosmodrome in Russia's far east will be carrying a radar observation satellite into orbit called Condor FKA-1. So a very busy uh, 24 hours ahead with uh, at least four orbital launch attempts planned from the United States, South Korea, Kazakhstan, and New Zealand. One note, uh, just to correct the record on the Nuri rocket uh, from South Korea, that'll be the third test flight of the Nuri rocket following a uh, failed launch back in 2021 and a successful launch uh, last year, last June. That was the first uh, domestic, fully domestic uh, South Korean rocket to achieve Earth orbit. And this mission uh, this morning will carry a number of satellites, uh, with the largest of which is a tech demo satellite called NextSat-2. So we're going to sign off our coverage now from Cape Canaveral, Florida. My name is Stephen Clark. Thanks for joining us for this launch attempt tonight. We'll be back with you for the next attempt, likely targeted for uh, about 22 hours from now. Tonight, Wednesday night, May the 24th, with a window opening at 11.25 p.m. Wednesday night or 3.25 a.m. UTC on Thursday. Thank you also to Stephen Young for production support on this coverage. Have a great evening or great morning wherever you are. We'll see you soon.